the idea of like a new language roadmap. I stumbled across one from the objectively better programming YouTuber, The Primogen. And I think that while implementing this game plan, I found a gap. I think that what actually tends to happen is that you get to this point where you're doing your own project and you run up against this idea that you actually don't know very much about how people solve common problems in the language. I don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. And I'm sure that Primogen is not reinventing the wheel himself either. And I think that the way that we don't reinvent the wheel is that we need to go and we need to look at real production quality code bases in the language to see how they solve some of these problems. And I think that ideally you would look at this and you would get direct feedback trying to contribute to a non-trivially sized project. You probably can see where we're going with this. If only there were somewhere that we could find a project of non-trivial size with people that are willing to comment on your code quality. I'm Brad and I'm a senior engineer at Fang. Let me teach you how to become a better programmer and a better engineer. If you're enjoying the content, please, I just need you to subscribe. Okay, I really need you to subscribe. Just go down there. It's free. It's totally free. Just hit the button and also maybe toss a little like and there's like a link to my discord in the description. Okay, I'm asking too much. I'm asking too much. Please just hit the subscribe button. The real value add approach that I think a lot of people are genuinely missing is that I think that you can learn a lot from attempting to contribute to open source in a language of your choice. And I wanna walk you through how I did that, the value that I think I gained from that, and what I feel like my next steps are for me to be able to grow as a Rust developer. I wanna be clear, I've never contributed to open source before doing this. This project was my first attempt at contributing to open source. So you might be sitting there thinking, I've never contributed to open source, this is too high of a wall. I'm here to tell you, I don't really think that it is. I, for, it, it feels really high. I want to be clear. It is not super ergonomic to get into contributing to open source. I stumbled across something called Meli Search. Maybe not even how you pronounce it. I'm not positive. And this, here's what I looked for. Okay. Number one, that's a real number of GitHub stars. Okay. Already, I'm like, nice. That's a real number of forks. I'm like, Nice. Now, Meli Search has like a company behind it, but it is open source. So in my head, this is fine because these people really want to make sure that the code quality is high because they're paid to make sure that the code quality is high. And theoretically, I will have like a semi fast return or like turnaround time on the PRs is my hope. And I think that is what happened. Tons of like these repos are like, you don't have to start with code. You can contribute like documentation. I feel like I don't have to tell you that that's not what I mean, but just in case that's not what I mean, you have to do code. Okay. You have to find a feature that has code. I found this, which seemed pretty simple. Make this route activable, which is a weird word via HTTP2. And I'm like, okay, we're just messing around with some HTTP routes. I generally understand HTTP routing. I generally understand the idea that we are triggering some sort of feature via an HTTP request. Bet I'm down. I scrolled down and I saw that someone, you know, a little bit before me had asked about potentially contributing to this, whatever. And they had gotten met with this comment. Okay. This code base is really big and is not recommended for a first time contributor in Rust. I'm not only a first time contributor in Rust, I'm a first time contributor. I've never done open source. So I want to be clear, this genuinely almost scared me off. I think that this discouraged me. So I'm going to encourage you to even if you see something like this, just keep going because this was no harder than it's been for me to onboard to any other production code base I've ever worked in. There was a lot of back and forth on this PR. I'm no goat of software engineering, okay? 
like obviously first time contributing in a brand new language i got some stuff wrong because of this i had to make several passes at my code i had to refactor some things in my code i had to really look through and learn how other parts of the code base were doing things and i think that is super valuable now i want to talk to you about the specific problem that i ran into that made me turn to try and see a legitimately sized code base that i could figure out how people are solving this this is going to get a little annoying and language specific about rust but just bear with me it's not super important that it's rust it's more that there was a specific question I had in mind. I ran into this weird problem in Rust. It's not weird, but I ran into this problem that was unintuitive to me as a developer in other languages. Rust does a lot of verbose error handling. And there's this idea that different packages return different errors. Most packages tend to return their own custom error type. And I was wondering, how do you go about coercing these things because I wanted to make sure that my little module here was going to return out errors cleanly. I turned to finding an open source project where I could find the answer to this problem. And I found an answer to this problem for sure. They define their own massive error type that has a bunch of different errors baked into it that could be from different causes. And then they return that. They return a subtype of that error, basically. Is this correct? I don't know. But I know that a professional company that makes a living off of Rust that has 39,000 stars and 1.5 thousand forks does their error handling this way. This is where the next steps come in. To me, the next steps are I need to go find a different open source project of Rust maybe in a different space, make a contribution there, compare and contrast. See what people do similarly, see what people do differently. And you could keep chasing this all the way down the line to whatever level of expertise that you want to get into. Because the open source community has other developers interested in writing good code in the language that you're interested in, and they will give you feedback. I think that you should try and do this too, if you're serious about trying to get good at a language fast, you don't want to have to reinvent the wheel by doing your own projects and just only trying to figure out how to structure things yourself. Non-trivially sized code bases will structure things differently. And so finding one of those in open source, I think is a huge value add for jumpstarting your ability to hit the ground running using idiomatic approaches to solving problems in the language.